We're now at part six of this YouTube series, which is gonna be the last video available on YouTube from the Vive Developer Mini course. In this video, I'll show you how to use SteamVR to create seated experiences for the Vive and other supported HMDs. The rest of the free Vive Developer Mini course is available at learn.vrdev.school. And the next section covers picking up and throwing objects, so you're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss that. We'll also create a mini game, we'll take a look at the mixed reality camera, I'll show you how to build and run your game on a Windows PC and lots more. So sign up and check it out. When you start building a game, you're always thinking about the inputs you're going to use and the positions the player's going to be in and how they're going to interact with that game. And that's true in any way that you're making a game, whether or not it's VR. So it's always really important to think about what the interaction is, what the input's going to be, where is the player. And uh, in VR, of course, we have with the Vive this ability to move in a tracked volume that's just a totally new experience and it's really great. But there's a lot of games out there that might just be a seated experience and the Vive supports that well too. Or maybe you've got an Oculus game that's designed to be seated and you want to bring it over and make it work for the Vive. Well, it works just fine with the Vive and I'm going to show you a little bit right now how you can do that. So first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to turn off our the one that uh, the camera that we made and uh, as much as we put effort into that, I'm just going to assume that you uh, have a, a blank scene here and that we'll just use the prefab as it is. What we do is go to the Steam VR prefab we dragged in earlier. And here under tracking space, you see tracking universe standing. And if we want to do seated, we change this to tracking universe seated. And now it actually can work for a seated game that you use the standing universe, but Valve strongly recommends that if you're going to be making a seated game that you set tracking universe to seated. So the other thing you got to do is that if you've calibrated your room for a room scale standing experience, you got to bring open your Steam VR tool and you got to run the room setup again. And you want to calibrate for standing only. And that's going to give you the tracking for a volume that's much smaller. It's about one meter by one meter. We'll show you that in a sec. So what we'll do here is we'll run through this to uh, this calibration. So the headsets we can see and then we're going to, uh, what you do is you stand in the middle of the cleared space and you hold the headset so it's facing the default direction you want to face in VR. So that's going to be, again, the Z direction in Unity. So we click the calibrate button. I've got my headset seated on, seated on my desk in front of me here and it's facing my monitor. Actually, I'm going to move back a bit and hold it to my chest so I get a little bit of space between me and my desk. And then we need to locate the floor. You can also, if you know the height of your desk, you can also type that in there, but I don't. So I'm going to put mine on the floor. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click calibrate floor. Okay. Next, now we get the happy dance. Everything's good. We're calibrated for a smaller volume seated or standing experience. Move this out of the way. And so the big difference here is that tracking universe standing assumes 000 to be on the floor in the center of the play area set up during the room setup. Whereas setting tracking universe seated assumes 000 to be the player's head. So the seated universe center is set and saved by calling the reset seated zero post through the OpenVR API. But I'll show you another way to get around that. The important thing, like I said there, is to realize that now we had before 000 was at the center of our volume. And now 000 is this player's head. So what happens is that if we hit play here, you'll see that I'm in the ball. So my face is right in the ball and like the ground is here. That's like y equals zero. So we'd have to compensate in our y direction for the for the, the height that we expect the player's head to be at. And so that's maybe, you know, 130 centimeters or, or something like that. So you might set Y up to uh, 1.3, so like 1.3 meters. And usually, if, you, if any of you have developed for the DK2, you'll know that you have to implement a reset button so that you have the, the player's forward direction reset. And almost every game had its own reset button. But let me just show you something with the Vive. Like I said earlier, you can actually reset that that seated zero pose through calling the reset seated zero pose in the OpenVR API, but I'm not going to worry about that because actually there's a way to do it through SteamVR. So what you do here is you what we're going to do first is bring up SteamVR and we're going to use the display mirror. I'm going to drag that into the scene here. 
so that you can see what I see. And now I'm going to play my game. Let me just bring that window up. Okay, so you can see here what I see. And what will happen now is that I grab a controller and I press the Steam button. Can you see over there, there's that, there's that circle that disappeared there. But I need to reset, basically I need to reset the position of this now that I've calibrated again. And so the way that I do that, here's my controller. I'm going to press the button to bring up the Steam menu. It's way over there. But, and that's because it thinks there's that little blue circle. I don't, you can't really see it, but it was down here somewhere. And that's where it thinks that I'm si where I'm sitting right now. So I have to tell it that's not where I'm sitting. I have to reset it. And like I said, you could implement it, that in your game, but if a player does this in Steam, that profile is going to carry across all games. So let me just put the headset on here so I can see this better. And it's very difficult to see for you, but I am in the, uh, let me just go back to Steam. So here's my Steam view. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's tiny. I'm sorry about that, but that's the way it is. And up here in the, there's the three icons in here and the very leftmost is a gear icon for the settings. So you click on that one and that takes you into the VR settings. And this top one is totally blurry. You can't read it, but you click on that one and that's the VR settings. You can barely hit it, it's so far away. Okay, now it says general VR settings. And then down at the bottom of here, you click this one, which says reset the seated position. Okay, so I got it that far away. So general VR settings, reset seated position. And that profile is going to carry across your, the, all of the game. So you don't need to set that yourself. Okay, so now I'm going to press the button to close the menu. Now I'm back in my scene and my head is on the ball at zero, zero. And then remember I set the, the, um, that center point and that is now where my face is at that center point. So there's the ball right above me and that's the seated experience. So let's just set that over here. Let's pause the game and let's grab the camera rig. We'll set that to Y 1.3 and then we'll play. See how the tracking volume moved up. Bring this up for you too. And you can see the ball is now below me. And that feels much more like a natural seated position. Here's my controller. I reach out and touch my controller. I've got, I'm seated at my desk here and I've got the controller. It's kind of exactly where I would expect it to be. My head is probably not exactly where my real head is, but close enough that I can, I, I don't feel any weirdness about that location. Okay. Okay, so the other thing that I just want to show you here is that in your, in your camera rig prefab, we had the Steam VR play area script. And when you use the tracking um, space seated, now you'll see that when you use the calibrated size, it's this very small one by one square, right? So you get one, one square meter of space. And that uh, that's, that's can be how you use that volume to plan out your game for a seated experience. So the Vive works well with standing experiences as well as with seated experiences. And like I said, technically you could use the standing universe with a very small area, but Valve strongly recommends that you go ahead and use the tracking universe seated for your games. And for those of you who are converting perhaps an, an Oculus Rift DK2 game, or maybe even an Oculus CV1 game, that might be a good way for you to take care of that. Thanks for watching this YouTube mini series. You can continue this course at learn.vrdev.school by clicking on the video clip shown on the screen. In the next section of the course, I'll show you how to interact with objects by picking them up and throwing them with the motion controllers. It's a lot of fun, so you definitely gotta log in and check it out. Signing up also gives you access to the latest versions of these videos, as well as content exclusive to VR Dev School students and mailing list members. If these videos helped you, then please help me by liking them and subscribe to the channel if you want to get more virtual reality developer videos.